Jesus is alive. Beloved in Christ, we have come to the second day of our Lent devotional series. Thursday, 15th of February. Our topic for today is the acceptable motive for fasting. Our reference passage is Isaiah 58, verses 1 to 3, and I read, Cry loudly, do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet and declare to my people their transgression and to the house of Jacob their sons. Yet they seek me day by day and delight to know my ways. As a nation that has done righteousness and has not forsaken the ordinance of their God, they ask me for just decision. They delight in the nearness of God. Verse 3. Why have we fasted and you do not see? Why have we humbled ourselves and you do not notice? Behold, on the day of your fast, you find your desire and drive hard all your workers. In chapter 58 of the book of Isaiah, the prophets explains to the Jews what God requires when they fast and what a true fast is all about. In this chapter, Isaiah speaks about the Jews and their misunderstanding, not only about God's requirement for a fast, but also their ignorance concerning those things that really please God. Cry loudly, do not hold back, raise your voice like a trumpet and declare to my people their transgression and to the house of Jacob their sons. Verse 1. One of the key issues God speaks about through the prophet is our in our passage is having the right motives when we fast. Our motive is very important in understanding this fasting exercise since it determines whether or not God will hear and answer us. Verse 3 says, Why have we fasted and you do not see? Why have we humbled ourselves and you do not notice? Behold, on the day of your fast, you find your desire and drive hard all your workers. In this verse, God mocks them by repeating their own words back to himself as a dialogue. In the discussion, they complain that they fast and yet God doesn't reward them in some way. God answers that they fast externally, perhaps some type of ceremonial fast, but their inner person is not changed. The proof is that they still treat others, their slaves and workers, with contempt in the pursuit of profit. Verse 4 says, Behold, you fast for contention and strife, and to strike with a wicked fist. You do not fast like you do today to make 
your voice heard on high. God describes the result of their so-called fast and tells them that it will not produce what they want. It won't reach heaven, meaning that they, their prayers won't be heard. Their so-called fast won't produce a more spiritual person. In fact, the way they perform this spiritual exercise will only increase their wickedness in God's eyes. People fast for a number of reasons. Despite biblical examples throughout scripture, many Christians are slow to fast. I believe there are three main factors that cause believers to be hesitant. Fear, ignorance, or rebellion. Talking about rebellion, a large segment of the Christian population is aware of the benefits of fasting, yet they are willing to do it. Their hearts are hardened when it comes to the idea of fasting. When God invites us to draw near, they dig their heels into the ground and refuse to obey. Mind you, we have regular fast, partial fast, absolute fast, and supernatural fast. Fasting enables the Holy Spirit to reveal your own spiritual condition. It is my humble prayer that the Lord himself help us to take our eyes off the things of this world and instead focus on God and that in this our fasting period we can demonstrate to God and to ourselves that we are serious about our relationship with him. We pray O Lord, that through the knowledge of the scriptures, we may have right and acceptable motive for fasting in order to have answers to our prayers and to have right relationship with him. We pray for grace to guard our hearts against every wrong motive and desire in our walk with you. We pray this prayer in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Amen.